Today, I'm going to quickly give my analysis and explanation of Russian Dolls Season 2. And naturally, there's going to be spoilers. There's something I definitely want to say before continuing this video. I thought Season 2 of Russian Doll was kind of messy at first. Like, I liked it a lot. But rewatching it actually made me appreciate it more. So hopefully, I can help you appreciate it more with me talking about it. To start, I think it's important to note that Nadia and Alan are different versions of the Nadia and Alan we saw at the end of Season 1. In Season 1, Episode 8, the episode episode ends with Nadia getting placed in a timeline where Alan doesn't remember her, and Alan getting placed in a timeline where Nadia doesn't remember him. But it appears in Season 2 we follow the ones that were placed in a third timeline, where they both remember each other and everything that they experienced in Season 1. At the beginning of this season, Nadia even explains to Maxine that her and Alan ended up in the same timeline, and she has to make sure that they keep it that way. The way that Nadia said this means that Maxine seems to be mostly clued in on what's happening between her and Alan. I don't know if Ruth was fully brought in, but she seems to be incredibly understanding. We start this season with Nadia signing Ruth into the hospital. Then when Ruth is getting taken in, Nadia says, All right, call me, I'll pick you up the whole routine. Implying that Nadia has been going there quite a bit. Nadia's felt like she's been Ruth's caretaker for about like four years now. So ever since Nadia turned 36, she's been tasked with taking Ruth to see doctor after doctor after doctor. After talk and needless to say, Nadia is getting a little burnout to the point where she is kind of doing the bare minimum for Ruth. Then it devolves to the point where Nadia becomes so neglectful that Ruth ends up getting taken care of by Maxine and Lizzie. Nadia is unable to be there for Ruth because she's been brought into the past and lost her family fortune. You know, typical late night shenanigans. But what is this family fortune, you ask? A bag full of Krugerans that was obtained by her grandmother selling her pre-war possessions. So Nadia loses this bag like twice now. And when getting escorted off the train by Alan's grandmother, she asks her if there's a lost and found. And Agnes responds that it's like a myth like El Dorado. Over time, El Dorado has changed in meaning. But El Dorado is most commonly known as the City of Gold, a city that caused adventurers to exploit and destroy new lands in order to come across this bountiful wealth and gold coins and stuff. Nadia claims that when she gets her inheritance back, she can afford all the best doctors and all the classiest extra race. Like the adventurers from the myth, Nadia ends up wreaking havoc on the world around her in pursuit of this gold. Her selfish pursuit leads her to the point where she brings back a baby version of herself to the future, in order to prevent everything that happened to her in the past from happening to her, which results in her literally breaking time. In episode 2 of this season, Chez claims that his family had this term called a Coney Island, named after the event of Chez's father receiving airborne polio and subsequently getting put in an iron lung, all because he took a trip to Coney Island. So to them, a Coney Island is the if only, the thing that would have made everything better if it happened or if it didn't. And that's what season two of Russian Doll is about, just a very surreal way of convincing Nadia to cope with the past. Nadia is taken to the last stop on the D train and gets to explore the if only, but is presented with the harsh lesson that she can't change anything and she shouldn't be prioritizing the past, she should be living in the present. The past version of Ruth even gives Nadia the answer to Nadia's problem. I just need you to be right here with me right here right now. And Alan even claims that maybe it's not about fixing anything. Maybe it's about them enjoying the ride. Back in season one, Alan was invisible to everyone. And other than having like one friend, nobody really liked him. So when he was in East Berlin embodying his grandmother, Alan enjoyed the fact that he could navigate through the world as Agnes, also known as an attractive woman, who was treated well by her partner Lenny and is constantly receiving compliments for harassment. Alan was out here living his best life and getting all the attention he wanted. The cake lover we saw back in season one was getting desserts and more cake on a daily basis. Alan's story didn't take up much screen time this season because he was pretty content with the life that he was living in 1962 East Berlin. He thoroughly enjoyed spending time with Lenny and kind of had the situation figured out from the beginning. The more Nadia tried to fix things, the further back in time she had to go. But no matter how far back she went or what she did, it didn't matter because she couldn't change anything. And no one took the gold from her on the subway. It simply vanished because because Nadia was trying to give her mom a second chance, and time wouldn't allow that to happen. Nadia was spending all of her time literally in the past, trying to alter things that can't be altered. And by doing so, she wasn't there for someone who was there for her her entire life. As Ruth ends up dying alone in her timeline, Ruth cared for Nadia's mother while she was pregnant, and was willing to trade her engagement ring for Krugerrands to secure Nadia's future. Maxine refers to Nadia as Nemo, the Latin word for nobody.
everybody, as Nadia is able to change bodies and experience the lives of others. And Nadia wasn't just living through her mother by body, she was also experiencing her mind as a paranoid schizophrenic. So this season, Nadia was able to understand what her mother experienced in her head, like what it was like to be institutionalized, as well as seeing the bug crawl through her arm. The bug stuff, Ruth was already aware of, as she had this growing concern for Lenora's mental health and the safety of her daughter. When Nadia decides to take the baby version of herself back, her and Alan get hit by a train and are separated, as they are taken to this different plane of existence, getting put in a place called the Void, where time seems to have stopped. Alan encounters his grandma, who ended up working in New York. Alan made himself not alive in season 1. His obsessive cleaning tells us that he has OCD tendencies, and his overthinking is indicative of his anxiety, and one of the things that plagues people with anxiety is not knowing. So Alan has to come to terms with uncertainty, starting with the fact that he'll never know what happened to Lenny, and that it's okay. Agnes was the one who put together the plans to help Lenny escape, knowing that she'll probably never see him again. Nadia knows everything about her past, but has to accept that the past is out of her control. She is presented with the Krugerrands, but is unable to carry both the coins and the baby version of herself, so she chooses to prioritize what really matters. Those were my quick thoughts on Russian Doll Season 2. Hopefully you liked the video, and thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.